Hey, Mr. Schrager here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about HIV and AIDS. Um, basically today, uh, this lesson is going to be um, what I call HIV 101. It's the basic idea of what's happening with the immune system and then in general what's happening with the virus, this, this particular virus, when it gets into our system, what it does to the immune system. So it's kind of the basics of those two things. So let's start off with what HIV stands for. Um, I'm sure most of us have seen this acronym before, HIV. Uh, the H in HIV stands for human, which means that only human beings can transmit and, and possess this particular virus. Um, I know there's theories out there about it being in monkeys and in cats and different things like that, but in all actuality, this particular strain of virus is only found in human beings. All right? The I stands for immunodeficiency. And I know that that's a big word, but it's really two words just squished together. All right? So immuno is referring to the immune system. Deficiency is referring to the fact that um, that there's a deficiency or that the immune system is deficient. It's lacking. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And so that's telling us a little bit of what it does. Um, it, it makes the immune system deficient. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. And then uh, the V refers to virus, which is the germ. The thing with the viruses is that we, we know how viruses work. We understand the concept. Uh, we get viruses in our system all the time. Um, but there are some unique properties with this particular virus that makes it so deadly. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, as the vodcast rolls. All right. So HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. Now, this particular virus causes a condition that we call AIDS. All right. Now, that's, that's important to understand the difference between HIV, the germ, and AIDS, the condition. Very important to understand. Now, the A in AIDS refers to uh, the word acquired. It means you catch it. You're not born with this genetically. Uh, babies can be born with HIV. Uh, they can be born with AIDS. But it typically means that they acquired it from their mom, all right? Uh, they caught it from somebody else, all right? So that's what the A stands for. I refers to immune. We talked about this. D, deficiency. There's that word again, immune deficiency. And then uh, it's a syndrome. Now, what a syndrome means is that um, there's a variety of things that can happen. It doesn't look the same in every single person uh, when you have a syndrome. Uh, it, it could be one person looks perfectly normal, another person looks deathly ill, and then you've got all kinds of examples in between. That's a syndrome. All kinds of different case scenarios can happen. So HIV, the germ, causes a condition that we call AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. All right. So let's take a, lo a look at uh, what this particular virus does. But to understand that, we have to know kind of the main player in all this. All right. And the main player in the HIV infection is what we call the opportunistic infections. This is really where the damage is done. Now what an opportunistic infection is, is that it's an illness or a germ that takes advantage of a weakened immune system. All right? and, and what you're going to find is, is that HIV doesn't kill you. All right? And I know that that may be kind of a new concept to some of you because you, you've heard over and over and over again that when you get HIV it, it's a deadly virus. And that's true. But HIV doesn't make you sick. All right, that's important to understand. HIV itself, you don't get sick from that virus. All right, that virus allows you to get sick because of all the other opportunistic infections that you get, um, and that's where the issue comes in. And typically, you'll see if someone dies from uh, from having AIDS, it'll be that they died from a complication of HIV or a complication of AIDS. And what that means is is that they their immune system was so weak they got they got um, you know basically attacked by a bunch of opportunistic infections that they couldn't fight off. Um, and that's the the real problem with HIV is it opens the doors to these other opportunistic infections. So so that word is important to understand, and that's going to come into play here in a little bit. Now, what I have here, and I don't expect you to write all this stuff down and uh, um, you know and have all this memorized, but this is some of the most common opportunistic infections that are out there. Okay, so when a person gets HIV, they're at risk of these types of illnesses that you and I, with a healthy immune system wouldn't necessarily worry about so much. Um, there's, there's a couple in here that we could get, like malaria, for example, from mosquitoes down, you know, down in uh, you know, the jungles and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for the most part, a lot of these different um, uh, germs are around all the time, but our immune systems are strong enough to fight them off before they make us sick. All right? um, for example, uh, right here, candidiasis thrush, very common. A lot of times when people get this, this is one of the first signs that they, they have a weak immune system. And it's basically a fungal infection inside the mouth that makes your, your, uh, um, uh, your tongue all patchy and white. Um, and then we have the cytomegalovirus, CMV, and this is an eye disease thing. It, uh, it, it causes blindness. It causes uh, eye problems, things like that. It affects the ocular nerve. 
Uh, herpes simplex virus, we talked about that already. Uh, malaria, that's uh, uh, it's common in like um, jungles and, and rainforest areas, and it's pretty much spread through mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff. It just makes a person more susceptible to some of the life-threatening effects of malaria. Um, mitobacterium, uh, this is a bacteria that causes like uh, fevers and they're sick and they they um, they have sweats and, and high fevers and all this kind of stuff. A lot of times they call this um, a wasting syndrome, which means that they basically start to waste away. Um, pneumonia, I'm sure a lot of us have heard of this before. It's a fungal infection inside the lungs, causes them to cough a lot, get extremely sick, um, and uh, it, it can be potentially fatal if it gets bad enough. Um, and then toxoplasmosis, a brain infection, tuberculosis, another bacterial infection that affects the lungs. Um, and, and there's a whole laundry list of different opportunistic infections. These are just ones that are really common, all right? Now, if we looked at this particular chart, you're going to see this word right here, CD4 cell, all right? And that's going to be important to understand, CD4 cell. You see right that range, CD4 cell range under 50. Um, this can occur at any CD4 cell count. Um, this has a CD4 cell range under 75. And what they're talking about there, that number, that CD4 cell range is what they're talking about is their, the condition of the immune system. It tells them how strong the immune system is. The lower the number, the weaker the immune system. Um, and so that's going to be an important number to understand um, when you look at HIV infection and, and how a person's immune system responds to different opportunistic infections and different illnesses that come into the body. So these are extremely important when understanding or treating or dealing with this particular virus is because the number of these opportunistic infections then is an indicator of the health of your immune system. The weaker the immune system, the higher the risk is that, that you're, it's going to be fatal. All right. All right, here's what a virus looks like. Okay, simple retrovirus. You can see here uh, we got the outer shell that, that um, it attaches to a healthy cell. A uh, virus needs a healthy cell to reproduce. That's one of the things about a virus. It doesn't contain DNA, dioxyribonucleic acid, a pretty big word, but that's what DNA stands for, dioribonucleic acid, whereas a virus doesn't have DNA. It has what's called RNA. Uh, that's just the ribonucleic acid. Um, so what a virus needs is it needs a, a host cell to be able to reproduce itself. And uh, that's the classic characteristic of a virus is can't reproduce itself. It's got to have healthy DNA. It's got to have DNA to reproduce. So what it does is it takes these little strands. You see these little single strands right here? Now typically DNA has the two strands that spiral next to each other and has all the genetic little pins that kind of go all the way around. looks like a spiral staircase, right? Well, what RNA looks like is just one side of the spiral staircase. It doesn't have the other side to it, okay? So what it, what it does is it basically attaches itself to the, the um, wall of a healthy cell, and it injects this RNA into the healthy cell. The RNA then wiggles its way into the DNA of the healthy cell, and it turns the DNA of the healthy cell into a copy machine. And what it copies is, is the virus, whatever that virus might be, okay? So the flu or a cold or a strep throat or a chicken pox or, you know, any of those kinds of things. And it starts cranking out uh, the germ instead of, of reproducing a healthy cell, okay? And then that's how we get sick, all right? And then our body has to come in and fight that off and, and, uh, and all that kind of uh, business. But that's how a virus works. If we can keep the virus from attaching to a cell, it can't make us sick. And that's part of what the immune system does. All right, so the first player in the immune system is what's called a macrophage, and the macrophage eats up all the dead cells. It's the, the typical white blood cell that we think of um, when, uh, when we see like a, a slide of a white blood cell, you know, munching on some kind of germ or whatever. It's like a, it looks like it's an amoeba, and it wraps around and envelops whatever these germs are. Well, that's just one type of white blood cell. The macrophage basically has two jobs. It eats up those dead cells. It goes in and cleans the, the body up, but it also informs another white blood cell called the helper T cell. Um, what's going on? All right. The helper T cell is kind of the macrophage's boss. All right. Now, I use some pictures on here. If you're familiar with the CSI shows, what I did was I put all these investigators, and that's kind of what a macrophage is, is like an investigator. It figures out a crime scene. It figures out what's going on and why something died and, and all that, and then it takes all of its, its data and it reports to the helper T cell and says, here's what I found, all right? So that's the job of the macrophage, very important uh, role in the, in the immune system. The helper T cell, what the helper T cell does is it's kind of the coordinator, the, the sergeant, the, um, the captain, the, the leader. It's the one that makes all the decisions. It's going to coordinate the rest of the immune system from this point on. So the macrophage reports to 
the helper T cell. The helper T cell takes that information and then it basically tells other white blood cells how it's going to react to this particular germ, this particular infection that's in the body. All right. So the helper T cell is the, the main player, the leader of the, of the pack, so to speak. And then we have another white blood cell that's called a B cell. Now, a B cell acts like a police officer, all right? And, and what the B cell does is it releases this thing called an antibody or antibodies. And what the antibodies do is they basically attach to that virus and, and they don't let the virus spread anymore. They basically neutralize it. You can't really kill a virus because the virus isn't a lot, all right? But it can neutralize the virus so the virus doesn't spread. That's kind of what the B cell does. So how does it do that? With these things called antibodies. So what do police officers have? They have handcuffs. And the handcuffs go onto you know, a criminal or onto a suspect so that the suspect is neutralized. It can't hurt anybody anymore. It's under control. Um, it's not going to be doing anything crazy while it's, it's basically immobilized with these handcuffs. So if you want to think of what antibodies work like, they work a lot like handcuffs. They immobilize the germ so it can't spread. It can't hurt anything else. That's what the B cell does. And then lastly, we have this thing called the killer T cell. And the killer T cell seeks out and destroys the infected cells that are in the system. So we have a germ pops up, the, B, the killer T cells find it, and it, it kills it. All right. Now the idea here is, is that if, the, if a healthy cell is infected with a germ, it's going to mass produce more of the germ. And so we have to get rid of that infected cell, otherwise we're never going to get the the virus or the germ under control. So the, the killer T cell plays a pretty important role. Now, let me let me give you this disclaimer. A lot of times people will call or think the killer T cell attacks the germ. All right? And it doesn't. All right? If you remember what attacks the germ. Think about it. What attacks the germ? All right? If you said the B cell, you're correct. The B cell attacks the germ, neutralizes it. The killer T cell, it's kind of like a an assassin or an inside guy. It, it's going to find out who the dirty criminal or the dirty cops are, and it's going to take care of those guys so that so that we're not spreading the bad stuff. Okay, that's kind of what a killer T cell does. I don't have a cutesy little police picture for that, but um, but that's its main job. So don't get that confused. The killer T cell and the uh, B cell do different things. Killer T cell attacks infected cells. That's what it does. All right. Now here's what makes HIV so dangerous, is that HIV targets a specific uh, white blood cell. And the white blood cell that HIV attacks happens to be the helper T cell. All right, now again, think about it. Why would it be so detrimental for, for HIV to attack the helper T cell? Why does that create such a problem? You have your answer? If you answer because the helper T cell is in charge of everything, you'd be correct, all right? Because HIV targets the helper T cell, it basically disables the immune system because none of those, none of the other cells knows what to do. The B cell doesn't know it's supposed to go attack a germ. Uh, the killer T cell doesn't know it's supposed to look for infected cells. The macrophage has nobody to report to. The macrophage knows what's going on. It, it knows what's happening. But when it tells the helper T cell, there's not that many helper T cells anymore, and so nobody knows what's going on. It turns into mass chaos. All right? That's why it can be extremely detrimental. Now, here's the other problem. All right, we we produce helper T cells. We crank a bunch of them out all the time, just like we do any other cells. However, HIV mass produces itself quicker. All right, it's estimated that the T cells reproduce up to about 120 million copies a day in our body. All right, it, it reproduces and replenishes those T cells. All right, now when those T cells are infected, they're mass producing HIV now. All right, that's important to understand. They're mass-producing HIV. So they produce up to 2 to 10 billion copies of HIV a day. So if you compare the numbers, all right, 120 million copies a day versus 2 to 10 billion copies a day, it doesn't, it, it's no surprise who wins that battle. All right? uh, the HIV is going to win, and it, it does eventually. It always does. Now, in today's day and age, we, we have better technology. We have better medicine, we have earlier detection, we have all these things that help to prolong a person's life who has this particular virus, but it costs money, and sometimes people can't take the medicines because uh, uh, they're, they're toxic or they don't have insurance, or, you know, so there's a lot of things that play into that, okay, but we've, we've got some improvements with, with technology and medications, but in the long run, eventually, we're going to succumb to the effects of the virus. We're going to succumb to the effects of, of too many opportunistic infections attacking too weak of an immune system. And eventually it's going to win out. 
Um, and that's the tragedy. That's the danger with HIV. Um, so that's basically the gist of, in, a, in a very short kind of kind of segment here of how the immune system works and then how HIV um, handles that immune system, uh, what, what it does in terms of when it attacks it and how it disables it so effectively. All right. So I've got a supplemental video that I'm going to put together. Um, it's not attached to this one. Um, but if you want to check it out, um, I'm, I'm going to use a, a different way to explain kind of how HIV works in the body and how the immune system is. And I've enlisted the help of, of uh, some guys here that are going to help me uh, explain how HIV works. All right. So uh, if you want, click on that supplemental video and uh, you can see me and my little friends here uh, duke it out and see how that, that uh, uh, illustrates HIV. All right. I suggest you tune in.